Hello fam, what is cracking? It is your girl Lillian Francis here with another Ableton Live tutorial. It is my goal to make learning Ableton Live as chill as possible, so thank you for joining me on this adventure. <sighs> Today we have a very exciting topic to cover. That's why I'm wearing my special cape. We're gonna be talking about parallel processing. For whatever reason, I'm just really obsessed with parallel processing and everything that it can do. So today we're gonna be talking about what it is, why we use it, and the different kinds of parallel processing in Ableton Live. So let's dive right in. Splash. All right, fam, so in order to understand what parallel processing is, first we have to understand what is serial processing. So serial processing is when our audio effects process our audio signal in a series. So in Ableton Live, here I have this wavetable here. Then it's gonna just go through this series of audio effects. So in this case, our reverb signal gets delayed, which goes through the chorus and then to saturator and then out to the master. So just one after the other. Now there's another type of processing called parallel processing. So with parallel processing, we start it with a single signal, just like in serial processing, but then we duplicate it and we process this other signal separately. And then at the end, they are combined again. You could technically call like a dry wet knob parallel processing because you are mixing in the dry and the wet signals, but there's so many different effects that I wanna achieve with parallel processing that dry wet knobs don't do. And this will become apparent as I talk about the three main reasons why I use parallel processing. So from this moment out, when I refer to parallel processing, I'm not talking about the dry wet knob, I'm talking about parallel processing with racks or return tracks or I guess whatever your DAW has. The three main reasons that we use parallel processing are one, when we want to increase the wet signal without decreasing the dry signal, when we want to process the wet and dry signals differently, and when we want to use one instance of an audio effect instead of several to save on CPU or just with general ease. So the thing about a dry wet knob and how it's different than what we're gonna be looking at today, which is using return tracks and racks to do parallel processing, is that when you have a dry wet knob, you have a 100% pie, right? And in order to turn up the wet signal, you have to turn down the dry signal. So imagine that I have a hose and I'm spraying someone down. If I spray down their feet, they are 10% wet and 90% dry. If I spray them from the waist down, they are 50% wet and 50% dry. And if I spray them from the neck down, they're going to be 90% wet and 10% dry. So every time you get more wet, you have to get less dry. There are many instances where we're going to want to increase the wet signal without decreasing the dry signal. Where we wanna keep that dry signal perfectly intact, we just wanna bring up the wet signal around it. And this is what parallel processing allows us to do. And we can't do that with a dry wet knob. Also a dry wet knob does not allow us to process our dry and signal differently. We can change the levels relative to each other, but we can't put different processing on the wet signal because our signals have not been separated. In Ableton, we have two different ways of parallel processing. We have return tracks and racks. So we're going to go through and talk about why you would use each one and then give some examples. All right, so our first example is going to be return tracks. So you may have used return tracks beforehand. In Ableton, our return tracks are over here to the right. Now these return tracks are going to have different audio effects on them. Right now I have a return track with a hybrid reverb and you'll notice that this hybrid reverb or whatever audio effect you're gonna have on a return track is always gonna be sent to 100% because we want the signal that goes through this track to be fully wet. I also have a delay on my second return track and if I wanted to make make more return tracks, I would just hit option command T or alt command T. Now, the way that we send audio to these return tracks is through our sends. Now in session view, you'll see that we have our sends right here. If you don't see your sends here, make sure that you have this yellow S engaged on the right. This will show and hide our sends. And these sends will send an amount in decibels to this track. So on the bottom left here, you're gonna see the number go up. So right now, negative inf decibels is nothing. And as I pull it up all the way here, it's going to be zero dB, which is our max. And they will both join up in the end, the wavetable and the hybrid reverb soaked wavetable and join each other at the end in the master track. Let's also pop into our arrangement view to identify the sends here. They don't say send, but these little guys, these little boxes that say negative inf in them, these are our sends and the number inside is the decibels that we are sending to the return track. The first one is gonna be our A return. The second one is our B return. And if we continue to create return tracks, 
they will just be C, D, E, F, G, etc. Parallel processing is super important when it comes to reverb on vocals because I want to make sure that my vocal is 100% dry. I don't want to sacrifice any of that dry vocal for my wet vocal because that's going to bring it back in the mix, right? I want my vocals to be right up there at front. I just want to also have this like dreamy reverb pillow around it. Alrighty, let's look into an example. But I'm doing this right. Yeah, I'm taking my time. And then if I want to change anything with my reverb here, I can just change it in this one instance and all of the vocals are going to have this different reverb. So I don't have to go through every single instance of the reverb and change it. There's just one. And then I would say the biggest reason why I use return tracks for my vocals is specifically using them for a delay. And this is a type of parallel processing that you cannot do the same way in racks. So let's take a look. My delay channel here is C and you can see I have have this automation drawn in here where very particular phrases are being sent to the delay. So let's give this a listen. The way you're running on my mind, but I'm doing this right. Yeah, I'm taking my time. Now, what's so cool about using return tracks for this is that you can send 20 decibels of this phrase over to be delayed here and it will continue to delay even after you have stopped sending the audio to the delay. So listen to that again. You'll hear that it keeps going past this point. The way you're running on my mind, but I'm doing this right. Yeah, I'm taking my time. Now this is an effect that we can't get with a rack. So for example, let's go ahead and disable this send and we're gonna check on a delay here. Here's the first issue we run into. One, if I wanna have any delay added in here, it's automatically gonna drop the volume of whatever is being delayed because I'm going to be sacrificing some of that dry signal for the wet signal. So all of a sudden my wet signal is, <laughs> bye. <laughs> It gets like hidden down a little bit, right? It's not as loud. So that's the first issue that we run into. The second issue is let's say I just wanted to have my device turn on for these words, right? So let's listen to how this sounds. The way you're running on my mind. On my mind. It's going to shut off as soon as I turn this off. You don't want that, right? So using our turn track here allows us to send certain words to our delay that will keep delaying even after we have shut off the siphon for the delay. So no more words are being added to the delay, but the ones that have already been sent to our turn track are still bouncing. So you'll see that I have like my reverb and my delay, they're all being processed separately. And that's a super important point of parallel processing. Check out my vocal reverb. I have an EQ, I have some utility, and then also very important, I have a sidechain compressor. So I, every time this reverb is hearing audio from the verse, it is ducking. So I never have my reverb really interfering with my actual voice. Yeah, I'm taking my time. Something you may be wondering is if we are soloing this verse, how come we can hear these return tracks? So if you right click solo, there's this option to solo in place. I have this turned on, which means that I can hear all the return tracks that this is being sent to. The way you're running on my mind, but I'm doing this right. But if I right click and uncheck solo in place, you'll see that all of these return tracks go gray. The way you're running on my mind. But I'm doing this right. And I can't hear any of the return tracks. So you can actually only have 12 return tracks in Ableton. So if you want to use more than 12, it's time to get into racks. So fam, that is going to be our next venture. Let's get into it. Okay, what are racks? So racks allow us to have multiple chains of devices within a single device. So let's look at how that works. Here we have our little wave table. And let's put a little... Yeah, let's put an echo. Cool. Now all I have to do is hit Command G and this little group is created around my echo. So we have just created an audio effect rack. Now on the left here, we have some different options. We can open up our macros and most importantly, we can open up our chain list. So this chain list is where our incoming signal branches. So one signal comes into it, right? The signal from the wavetable will come into it. And then from here, we can duplicate our chain, which is essentially duplicating our signal and then process each one of these signals or chains separately. In order to 
create a new chain, we can either drop another audio effect here, as it says. So let's see, let's drop in a grain delay, or I can drag this grain delay holding down option and it will duplicate the chain. And then I can just delete what I already have there. So now I've taken this one audio signal and created three separate instances and they're gonna all combine at the output. Something to keep in mind is that if we want a dry signal in the mix, which we probably do, we're going to want to create a chain that has nothing on it. And then with the chains that have effects on them, I'm gonna make sure that the effects are turned 100% up because we want the fully wet signal and put the dry at top because that's how my brain works. If you want, you can make them like pretty colors. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet, so now I have this dry chain, but then I also have this echo, I have this grain delay, and I have this reverb, and I can just mix them in as I want, and maybe I wanna pan it out a little bit, so I can move one to the left, one to the right, etc. And now that we have each of these different audio effects on a separate chain, we can process them differently, which is like the whole fun of it all. So maybe this reverb, I want to EQ it. Now this reverb does have an EQ in it, but let's pretend that it doesn't. I can go ahead and throw an EQ onto the chain. So maybe I want the reverb to just be heard from 500 Hertz to like 5,000 Hertz. Sweet. And then maybe I want to press it further, put on a utility, put it inside the rack. If I put it outside the rack, it would affect every single one of these chains because all these chains are going to be going out through the output right here. They're all going to be coming out and being added together, but I just want to affect the reverb. Maybe I want the reverb to be pushed out to the side. So I'm going to turn up the width and then my grain delay. Maybe I want my grain delay to be saturated. So I'll grab a saturator throw in a little saturation. <laughs> and I can also do parallel processing within my chains. So if I wanted to create another instance of parallel processing, say for the saturator on my grain delay, I could hit command G, open up my device chain, duplicate this chain, delete the effect off the top one. We'll call this dry. We'll call this next one saturation. This would be allowing me to maintain the full dry grain delay signal and then just boosting up or down the amount of saturation I want added. And of course, if we do this, I have to turn the wet up to 100. And then maybe we want to add another EQ8 on the end of this rack. So if I drop it on either the saturator or the dry, it would be only affecting one or the other. If I want to affect both, I'm going to put it just outside this rack. So racks first, parallel processing with return tracks. I like racks more. I try to use them whenever possible. With racks, I find it a lot easier to see what all of my different effects are on that track. I get really confused over in send land. Like look at all these sends up here. If I'm looking at a track and I'm trying to think about how I'm processing them, I see a negative 32 in this random box and that doesn't really mean anything to me. But if I look here and I see a negative 32 here, I can very easily see, oh, negative 32 of echo. Oops. Echo 100. And also a lot of the times I can want subtle variation between like my delay or my reverb or whatever's being sent. And it's just really easy to do that in racks to change it up when you just want to change it for one track and not for every single track. So you got to think about that when you're putting on an effect, is this an effect that's very specific to the track or is this an effect that you're going to be using with a lot of different tracks? Also, you can make an endless amount of chains so you don't have to worry about maxing out your parallel processing. Something to keep in mind is this will take up more CPU than just having one instance of an audio effect in your return track. But if you're using small plugins and native Ableton plugins, it shouldn't matter that much. Wow fam, that was a lot. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to comment below. I will try to answer them. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me on this parallel processing adventure. And if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe. It helps with my ego and the algorithm. So fam, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time.